Hello and welcome to the Student Council Podcast, an educational advice show made for students by students, where everyone is qualified to talk about their own experiences. I am Carter Dvorak, and today we are joined by my cousin Claire Lucas from the University of Minnesota, although she's not exactly coming in from Minneapolis right now, which we'll get into. Welcome, Claire. Hello, thanks for having me on. This is so fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so fun. Thank you so much for coming on. I am really excited to talk to you. We've got a lot of really fun stuff to get into. First of all, though, our intro question, what been your favorite five minutes of the last week and it can be more or less than five minutes but I liked that little alliteration so (laughs) um I would have to say this week it's starting getting to be like spring over here so we had a uh, one really warm day on Saturday and it was like 65 degrees and after cold and rain for the past two months it was wonderful so me and my friend we went and walked around and had a coffee and went to some stores and that was longer than five minutes but it was pretty good day so awesome that is so so cool like we've had a similar thing here in michigan too where like spring is i think finally here hopefully unless it's another deception which has happened a couple times but yep. it feels so good to be outside again the sun is out you can go hiking and stuff it is yep it makes me so happy good dose of vitamin d good dose of vitamin d it's so essential just to kick off i guess the kind of the, the general question what has your college experience been um i feel like my not including the COVID part. I feel like it's been a pretty normal college experience. I've had a really great time. Um, I've met freshman year. I met some really great friends and sophomore year, I was able to live with some of them and meet some more. Um, so the social part's really great. And I think academic wise, I've had a good course load. I think my major is actually really good for like what I want to study. Not so much on the career part, but I like learning about it now. Um, cool. yeah. And Minnesota offers a bunch of like clubs and stuff that you can join in organizations and overall it's just like it's been a really great time I'm gonna be sad when it's over yeah you're it's next year right next year senior year for you yeah and I think I'm gonna graduate in December because I only have another semester of credits to take yeah it's coming out coming to an end coming soon wow Mm -hmm. that is man as a senior in high school I can only imagine what college is gonna feel like wow so actually I'm curious so graduating in December was that how did you like advance in your, I assume in the credits you needed to take then? Like, was that a, you could knock off some stuff from high school AP or was that like in college you just did more stuff? Um, I came in with a bunch of credits. I, luckily my APs were able to transfer over all of them except for two. Um, so I already started off with a bunch of my like gen eds. So I didn't have to spend all of my freshman year just taking of all the like pre-rec stuff. Um, It was kind of an accident to graduate in December. I was never planning on it. I was always going to do the whole four-year thing, but um, I was looking at my, we call it our A pass, like we, to see how much we have to do left. And I only have 13 credits, which is just enough to be a full-time student. So I'm like, well, guess I'm graduating in December. Guess so. So that's coming up. That's this year. That's 2022. Yeah. At Christmas, I'll be done with college, which is nuts. So. Absolutely. Absolutely nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to get into one of your, I think, current U- University of Minnesota experiences. So you're in Scotland right now. So what's that like? Basically, how did this process begin? Like, how long had you always wanted to do study abroad? Like, talk me through that process, because I have no clue how study abroad works. <laughs> well, I've been planning on it. I've picked all of the colleges that I applied to all had really great study abroad programs. Um, but then freshman year happened and COVID happened. So I didn't think I was actually going to be able to. And after doing a little bit of research, like over the summer for junior year, so last summer, I was not planning on it. And then I um, actually talked to a girl from home from Virginia and she was like, oh, you definitely have to. And so, you know, I was like, you know what? Once in a lifetime experience, like I should do it. And so my school offers like a really great program that you can, um, they have them all over the world. And my thing was I needed to go somewhere where they spoke English Uh uh, because I haven't taken single language since sophomore year of high school. Same. So yeah, I'm, I know how to say hello and goodbye in Spanish. So, um, but yeah, and it was actually a pretty easy process. You just have to like communicate well with your learning abroad center. And I think a lot of schools have them. So if you were interested in that, you could look into it, but, um, yeah, overall it's been a really great experience. I think it's, definitely like biggest change you could do I guess learning experience wise I don't know if that made sense but 
Yeah. It definitely made sense. It that like I I still think I th I'm hoping and thinking that wherever I go I'll get a little bit of time to go abroad somewhere, which I am excited for and I think will be a great thing. But mm -hmm. I bet it it'll be an absolute like culture shock and, and for certain. And even we've talked like you know they speak English you know in Glasgow, but it's not like it's, it's not the English that we're familiar with. Yeah, yeah. It still takes a little bit of getting used to to really figure out what the heck someone just said. <laughs> and they yeah. Use different slang and stuff. Absolutely. Like, so, so there's definitely a learning curve. How quickly did you get semi comfortable? I mean, have you gotten like at least a little bit comfortable in navigating that stuff? Yeah, I would say I was really lucky. So I actually, I didn't know anyone when I came over here, but the second I got off the plane, I met two girls who I was able to go to dinner with that first night, which I think was really important for me to begin feeling comfortable because when I first landed in, on that plane, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm by myself in a different continent, like just kind of panicked. Um, but then I would say probably it took like two weeks to really get into the routine. And it was nice that classes started right away because you weren't just sitting around doing nothing without knowing anybody. And yeah, and everyone here is super nice and all the locals, like um, they're not like some places where they don't really like Americans. So they'll talk to you and they'll help you um, figure out where you need to go and what you're trying to do so that's awesome that's, that's i'm glad yeah. that like you're welcomed there and not like seen with with strange eyes i think that's a really yeah probably a big thing in studying abroad yeah like yeah. i i know some people who went to paris and in some places they're just so mean <laughs> so i felt very lucky to have a welcoming environment absolutely did you know that ahead of time did you know much of that culture before you arrived like was there any prep that you had to do um well, for starters, for the Learning Abroad Center, they make you do like a whole culture shock thing. And it's like, you have to research your program and or your home country and figure out the cultural stuff and what's appropriate and what's not, because it's also different. But um, I actually, one of my good friends from high school, her mom is from Scotland, from Glasgow. So wow. I was able to talk to her about it a little bit. And she's always been so sweet and nice. So I wasn't really that worried about coming over here. That's awesome. So you're studying kinesiology right now. And like, I guess really the, the question is like, how has that gone for you? Like, was that always kind of your plan to jump into that field? And like, what do you plan to to do with it? Or how have you been? How's it been going, I guess? Well, so like I said, I've always wanted to be a PT, like physical therapist. And for that, you pretty much do. They like my, at least my um, program, they like make you take an orientation to physical therapy class. Like they bring in all these PT guest speakers and um, like they really set you up for PT school, which I was like, I loved, um, but it's not all only about physical therapy. It's like, I learned a lot about, I've learned um, sports psychology and like, uh, I'm trying to think about other fields. It's very, very broad, but I really like the actual topic, but it's the figuring out what comes after. That's the hard part. So yeah, and all my professors at school are really great and helpful and really care about their students, I feel like. So it's been a good experience. What is the size of University of Minneapolis? Like, I feel like I, I go to, I've toured a lot of small schools and they really emphasize like professors care and they want to have coffee with you. Like is, is Minneapolis, I feel like it's at the larger school, right? Yeah, it's definitely, it's 50,000 both undergrad and grad school. Wow. I think 35,000 mm -hmm. under. I'm, I'm just making up these numbers. So, but it's definitely a big, it's a big 10 school. So it's a big school. Um, but the further you get up in your actual education, the classes get smaller and smaller and you get to know um, your professors more and more. Like I've had the same professors over and over and they start to remember you and you can talk to them. And I think my biggest class last semester was 40 people. So, and in freshman and sophomore year, you're used to like your big lecture halls with 300 people in them. But yeah, it definitely gets more slimmed down as you go through it. I feel like I've heard that from other people too, that, yeah. you know, because I've looked at big 10 schools, I've looked at small schools. And I feel like I think a lot of small schools tout that really small student size and like professors care about you. But it seems like, yeah, if you when you progress in a larger school, that kind of happens anyways, you form that community like you know, and because as that major, I guess, not even weeds people out, but as they go their separate ways out of like just intro classes, I feel like that definitely occurs, which I'm, I'm happy to see. I'm glad that that's a thing. And I'm like, that's a refreshing and kind of a comforting thing, even if I choose to go to like a, a bigger school. Yeah. And I've had, a, at least in kinesiology, I don't know, it's not like business, which I'm sure is way bigger of a major. But like, for me, 
I've had the same people in my classes. Like I recognize all of them from freshman year and I made a couple really good friends through it. And we've just always not even planning it. We've always been in the same discussions and which is super nice. And I'm, I'm sure it's like that for other um, majors as well. I think that at least in like, I don't know, I just went to University of Michigan. So everything I'm thinking about is comparing to that. They seem to have just really good ways of like, almost like not forcing community, but really creating those spaces, whether it's like, you know, live in learning things. And I know that's like a lot of colleges have that or like, I think, you know, little modules within your classes. It seems like that's a really, I think a key thing to high school. And I feel like something that gets overlooked a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like you see a lot of like the big schools is that you're not as connected, at least me coming from like my small town high school that has 70 kids in our grade. And we're like the biggest one of all time, which is wild. So that's great. Yeah. I also think for like, maintaining those professor contact like connections at a bigger school you definitely have to put in the work like you have to go up and talk to them and email them a bunch and but they sooner or later after like the first or second week of class when they're still getting adjusted they'll start to remember you and that helps too if you need an extension or if you can't come to class one day or I don't know they'll they'll be more accommodating to you I feel like if they know you so I feel like what office hours probably fall, fall into that category as well like I, you know, I feel like I hear that come up too. And it seems like a great way to, I guess, get to know professors and work on content outside of class and stuff too. Yeah. Cool. I would recommend office hours too. Yeah. I, how do actually, I was wondering about this. How do college professors compare to high school teachers? Like, I always feel like there's distinctions made and I always hear about how accurate or inaccurate they are. Like, what is, I guess, the difference there? Even in like people, I feel like the joke is always high school teachers say college professors are really strict, but in actuality, college professors are chillier than high school teachers. How does that hold up? Well. It's true, honestly, like college professors are way more relaxed. They, you, you also have more responsibility on your own when you're in college. So professors don't care if you come or not. It's like, it's up to you to show up. And so they're not going to email you every day you're not in class and be like, where were you? Whereas like high school, you would get a phone call home, like, you know, stuff like that. And also a lot of them are there for research. Like, I don't know about how it is with other schools, but in Minnesota, They're all known for their research and stuff. While yes, being a teacher is like their job. They're also still focused on that. They're not watching you all the time like they were in high school. Okay, interesting. I guess that that definitely makes sense. And I even feel like I have AP teachers that more fall under like when you hit like AP classes, maybe it's just being a senior. I think teachers are a little bit more lax than they were as a freshman. But yeah, that's like, that's comforting to hear. Cause I always wonder, I'm like, is that true? Is it not true? And, and I assume it's, uh, there's both ends of the spectrum there. So moving into a bit more rapid fire questions, but still I think about, you know, college and in your high school experience and everything. The first one we do is a little thing called pass it on, which is essentially like, is there a piece of high school or college or just school advice that somebody maybe gave you that you want to pass on? And then there's kind of this and or is this ultimate tip which like if you either didn't have that or they're together or you just want to share it separately is there like one big old piece of advice that you really want to give somebody like particularly going into college honestly it sounds like so cliche but it's really just to try everything like I don't know like you have to put yourself out there even if it's scary like I was was pretty shy so I had to you have to get out there and do it if you want to meet people because they're not going to come to you. That's my only thing. And like, try all the clubs and they're so fun. You never know who you're going to meet. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Is there like a particular experience that comes to mind or like a club that you kind of push yourself to try, but now you really like or people in that realm too? Um, Yeah, there's actually two. So one of them was the club lacrosse team I joined and I met one of my really good friends on that team and I would never have met her if I didn't do that. Um, And then another one was I joined this like workout um club thing and it was so strange and I did it for a semester and you know looking back I laugh at it but I'm so glad I did that because now I know I wouldn't do it again and um but like it's just an experience to have and you can look back and laugh at it so makes a good story absolutely exactly it's good for the plot good for the plot I've been hearing that recently I like that thinking it's I think it's a fun way to to reframe things yeah I guess also another question about kind of college, particularly like what were your expectations going into college versus like, how did the reality compare? And and I know COVID's probably a big factor in this too, of switching a lot of things on their head, but how did that go? Um, well, I did not have, like, I did not know what to expect because I didn't really know much about Minnesota. I'd only been there one time for like a day. And so I just knew it was going to be cold. Like I didn't know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what to I didn't know what the people were going to be like. I didn't know who, because the majority of the people who go to University of Minnesota are from Minnesota. 
so they all like know each other and you know came in with a whole bunch of friends and yeah so I just I can't really say I had that many expectations but turned out better than I imagined and honestly I would say try like that new experience and go far away or go to the one that kind of scares you a little bit because you never know how it's going to turn out could be really great really great that's awesome I guess talking on that too what drew you to Minnesota above like other choices that you had like what was it kind of a little bit of that far element that almost like fear factor to it or that really new experience when I narrowed it down it was between Minnesota, Michigan State, and San Diego State, and none of those are close to Virginia. No. So <laughs> I, I always kind of knew I wanted to go somewhere far where I wouldn't really see anybody that I had known just so I could get that new experience. And I guess I just kind of chose Minnesota because the other two didn't excite me that much, I guess. I, I don't know. I just couldn't really see myself there. I couldn't really see myself in Minnesota either. And it's funny because that was like, I only applied because I got a fee waiver to it. Oh. Mail because my mom went there for grad school so like it was so random but interesting ended up being a really good choice so that's really good to hear did your did your mom give you any tips on like the the like where to go in minneapolis or like the things to do or no she was um only there for grad school so she didn't do any of like the undergrad things like the football games or the um hockey games like she didn't go to any of the student stuff really because she was really focused on her schoolwork at that time and she had already done the whole undergrad thing so to Minnesota, there's like two campuses and she was on this side and I was more on this side. So she didn't really have any good suggestions. I guess I asked to you then, are, like, what are some of the things to do if, if one were to go to University of Minneapolis or Minnesota and, or just like visit Minneapolis, like the food spots, the hot spots, like social places, like any recs you want to give off? We went to a bunch of restaurants last semester. I'm trying to think of the best ones. There's this place called Nolo's, which is really good. There's this pasta place that we went for my birthday, but I'm trying to remember what it's called. Broders, I think. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm trying to remember the names, but I can't. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if you find a pasta place, some something close to Broders, if it's not Broders, like. Yeah, Brogans. Bro- Brogans. I don't know. <laughs> one of them. Yeah, one of them. Pasta place that starts with a, a B or a B R O, and <laughs> yeah, something you can like that. you can figure it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. More into like just kind of the like the the into the college experiences like dorm rooms or just kind of living at college like is there an essential item that you would bring there and also since you're you know in Glasgow and studying abroad is there like an essential item to bring to somebody who's studying abroad? Um, for a dorm room, you must bring shower shoes. It is oh, okay essential. Even if you have like um, if you have a little sweet style thing, it's still they don't clean it that well so you don't want to get foot fungus so you bring your flip-flops you bring them (laughs) target two dollar flip-flops and you bring them um for study abroad i didn't really bring that much i only brought a big suitcase so i guess i would have to just say your passport um it's a pretty important one passport's a good one yeah oh and an adapter to the plugs because they have different outlets than the u.s oh wow this i did not know what do they yeah. look like? Do they still kind of look like a face? Um, no, they have it's like a three three prong. Oh wow! Yeah, and they have it's kind of cool because um, they have f- switches on them, so you can turn your outlets on and off, which is actually apparently a lot safer than the way the U.S. does it. Yeah, switches on outlets always like I always look at outlets and I'm like, is this a hazard? Like, is there <laughs> anything to worry about with this? And I I just kind of assume it is not, but yeah. maybe I should be a little more concerned. Interesting. Yeah. Um, getting a little bit reminiscent here, is there a high school moment that you still like think about that really resonates or comes to mind? I'd have to say just being on the dance team, like the overall, my whole experience is really fun. And I miss like the laughing after school and the performing and just the bond that I had with all those girls was really great. Yeah, that song's really, really great. Like, I, I feel like I have that a lot in band and, and always like, I think performing in some level with a group is such a really like a great activity to bring people together. Yeah. You have to be. Yeah, exactly. Like you have to be so in sync. And I don't think there ever will be another group where I'm like on the same wavelength like that again. Very cool. Now I'm working on building a bit of a uh, high school and college essential music playlist. So I was wondering, do you have any songs to add to that? Like a song that maybe got you through high school or college or like a period of school? Um, I don't know if I could say a specific song, but I do enjoy Mac Miller's music. Um, and he has this album, what is it, what is it called? Um, Circles. 
and it's like a more chill vibe. So I like to listen to that when I study, but I, I don't know if it was a specific song, but you should listen to that album. It's really good. Okay. I will put that on my list. I've, I think I've heard the name Mac Miller, but not much after that. So yeah, Circle seems like a really cool album. Yeah. Some of the songs on there were like TikToks. So you'll probably recognize a couple. <laughs> probably will. I've been experiencing that so much, Ro. Watching Encanto was the biggest one for me. Is the amount of like, I don't know if you're on Disney or Encanto TikTok at all, but like all, you know, all the we don't talk about Bruno and everything else from that. Like I, I finally watched the Disney movie that all that stuff came from. And I had multiple moments of just like, like being yeah. a goth at the TV. Like that's where that came from. <laughs> like, whoa. I know. I so. love hearing something and I'm like, I know that yeah but, yeah it's so funny it really is i'm excited like i feel like prom this year that we're gonna get a, a string of tiktok hits i feel like it's some on the dance floor oh my gosh. so yeah are you excited for prom i'm very excited for prom it is in april is going to be a super nuts month because we have like so much going on with spring break and then like a school trip and then prom is like squeezed right in the middle of those two things but i am very excited i think it'll be because last year's was really great it was outside and they really tried to make the best of it. But this year, for the first time since 2019, we get like the proper venue that we've had oh booked gosh. since 2019. Um, oh and we'll like yeah. get, I think, the whole prom experience, which I'm really grateful for. Yeah. Oh, that'll be so fun. Yeah. Are there college proms? I guess I've never thought about this. Are there big college, like, I feel like maybe football games are kind of this, like, big college dances or events? Or is it more like, I feel like at college it's more smaller, more like frat or like basically housing yeah. centric? It's. I haven't heard of any like big college formal type thing, but I know um, frats have frats and sororities both hold like different events for their philanthropies and stuff. Um, I think a bunch of clubs do them too. If you look into them, like people have big events all the time, yeah. but it's not, it's not like prom really. It's not like it can bring everybody together. That I think that yeah. makes sense for high or college versus high school too, right? I've got a pretty small school where you could probably have most of the student body at the like at a prom venue, and it would like it'd be a full house, but it wouldn't be overflowing. Yeah. So and in college, you can't fit your entire graduating class in one building without squishing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just what probably graduation orientation, and then yeah. 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 Last question here that we have is, um, what would you tell, I guess, freshman year of high school? And then also, what would you tell freshman you in college? I guess for both, just not to take things so seriously. I feel like in the moment, everything is so like the whole world, you know, this is especially for high school. Like when, if there's like a little drama or something, it's, you, you know, it's everything in that moment. But in reality, it's really not that big of a deal. And nothing's ever that deep that's what i've learned really oh yeah oh absolutely man that has been the biggest piece of advice that i've been trying to wrap my head around for like three years and it's yeah it's so true it's so true yeah once you get a little older you really like like now i'm like did i really get mad over that when in reality you usually just talk to them but like or if it's a person or if it's just a situation you just be like take a step back get a little perspective and then that would circle back to it yeah absolutely it is absolutely crucial it is absolutely absolutely crucial i've been thinking about that recently too almost in like in i guess like remembering things like i guess you know as a senior getting very nostalgic about high school and like kind of thinking through like the stuff i reflect on and like I, obviously there's low lights that come to mind but like there's a lot of highlights and a lot of things that i'm like oh, okay this is probably really sucks and i'm like oh this was not like a problem like yeah. in the long term like like there's one room where it's it's the band room and it's got like 80 kids in it and there's like no temperature control so i feel like it's a sauna every day and i and, like and i had completely forgotten about it and even i'll be in the band room sometimes i'm like it's so hot in here and then i'll get to next hour and i completely forget like I'm, like it doesn't yeah. matter like right. it is a and warm you room remember the good times over the hot you know yeah yeah, it's a warm room for 60 minutes. Like, I am I will endure. And that is, yeah, that is not what I remember at all about band yeah. or that room or anything else. Right. Like, when you look back in, like, 40 years, you're, you're not going to remember that they should have had AC. <laughs> no. And, and thankfully, it's getting remodeled. So the next kids will have AC. But even still, yeah, no, we don't. It's not the, the big kicker of high school, I don't think. Right. It's better temperature control. Yeah. I hope that you had better memories or better, like, reflections <laughs> than, man, I wish it was warmer in here or colder. <laughs> so... 
Yeah. Honestly, I don't remember any of like the little things. No. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings us to the end of this little interview. Thank you so much for, for hopping on and talking through it. One of the last questions I have to ask to you, is there anything you want to like plug or promote or just kind of share about like direct people to? Nothing to plug, nothing to promote, but yeah, I don't think so. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Glasgow plugs. That's that's what I'll plug. Yeah, study abroad or, or go to University of Minnesota. Super fun. <laughs> yeah, that is those things and even plugs that can turn on and off. I'll plug those plugs. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm like, that's, I'm going to think about that now. Like, I will, I feel like I'm not going to let that go. Um, no, it's super cool. It's fascinating. Um, I would never would have known. So thanks for, for telling me about the, your experience here. Of course, I'm glad to enlighten you on I'm that very glad. situation over here. Yeah, we'll see in the future. Maybe we'll reinvent the outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, thank you for listening to another episode of the Student Council. I've been Carter Dvorak, and that has been Claire Lucas. Claire, any other final words you want to say to the people? Thanks for listening, and thanks for having me on, Carter. This is so much fun. Thank you. This is such a blast. Great to talk, great to catch up, and great to to hear about study abroad. I feel like I know a lot more than I did, like, an hour ago, so. Yeah. I'm glad that I've been able to share. Well, thank you. Yeah. If you want to hear more of this podcast, our Instagram is at StucoPod, and our email is StucoPod at gmail.com. So wishing you good luck and good times in all of your educational endeavors. The council is adjourned.